But when we're pre uh, presenting our data in um, software like SPSS, actually, so if we go back to the data view, we have to ask ourselves whether, well, what precision it would make sense to uh, display something, say, like height. So if I put, just change the number of decimal places. So, if I now go back to data view, okay, so I've now said, okay, I'm going to display height to the sixth decimal place. If you're measuring the height of individuals, could you hope to measure them to the sixth part in a centimetre? I suspect not. Um, would it make any sense if you're comparing the heights of people to measure them to the nearest micrometer or nanometer? Do you care if you've grown a nanometer in the last day? I suspect your height changes more than a millimeter throughout the day. So. Um, and that's why we need to think very carefully about what sensible um, precision is for our variables. So, and you can change that in SPSS using this decimals column here. So that's why I had it down at zero. Because actually I think measuring to the nearest centimetre with height, if I'm using a tape measure, it's probably the best I'm going to get. So it makes sense only to measure perhaps for this example, to the nearest um, nearest centimetre. If you're if you are really interested in how the height of a human varies throughout the day, you might be. You may actually find that you need to be measuring very precisely to the second decimal place. So it's very context specific, uh, and context is actually one of the key points in all of this. And so you can do the same with age, for example, with age. Who cares if I'm, I don't know, 19.259 years old? It doesn't make any sense. Normally you record age to the nearest year, perhaps the nearest quarter year. Um, but for the, it, and it's very often about the questions you're trying to answer that define, and, and the measurement tools that you have at your disposal that help you define the precision that you'll use. Yeah, so like I said, we've already sort of said about categorical data being a descriptive measurement um, and not ordered. So yeah, alien species, gender, ordering them makes no sense. So they're just categories. But what we can do with categorical data, so similarly to last week where we got the, the cycling speed data and represented that in a histogram, you can also do that with categorical data and you can also re represent it in these things called frequency tables. So your, your um, that's your histogram there, and this one's a frequency table. And what you can see is the two are linked. So you've got um, here, if you look at the number of males in our sample, we've got four. If you look, that's males, we've got four. Okay count the number of them there. The females we've got six. Six. The one of the things to look at in a frequency table is the um, the percentage. So down here we've got this percent here, we've got forty percent um, male because we've only got ten samples, pretty obvious. Sixty percent females. Now if you look at the cumulative percent that is just adding up those values. So 40 plus 60 is 100. Oh yeah, and frequency tables, you can make frequency tables with any data. So with continuous data or scale data, you, uh, such as height, you actually can turn that into a categorical variable by, um, by binning it. So we could say the heights fall in a range 170 to 180. So our category becomes a 170 to 180 as opposed to just the exact number so you, you then count the number that fit into that bin and similarly with age I'm going to quickly produce this and while I'm doing it just think 
um, and maybe open up Word or something, write down a few, a few, few thoughts. What can you say about these results? So remember, we've landed, we've surveyed some people, and then we produce, uh, some, we produce some frequency table in history. Well, what can we, what does it mean? What can you say about it? And this is the, probably the most important thing that we do in this course. It isn't how to produce the numbers. The key thing is how we interpret those numbers, how we use those numbers. So who cares what numbers you get if you cannot discuss what they mean? Okay? So that is the absolute key factor in this course. Think about that for a minute while I just produce, um, reproduce a frequency table and histogram for the categorical data under the heading gender. There you go. So, having had that time to think about what it means, actually, you notice, if you notice, that it, a couple of subtleties here, that when it's produced the histogram, it hasn't put in my category um, variables down the bottom. I can actually fix that by producing another graph, the way that we did it before. There you go. So it's put my male and female in under there. That was really what I wanted to do. Has anyone now, having had an enormous amount of time to think about it, thought about <laughs> what these results mean? So we sent out these surveys, we've got 10 results, we've stuck them in a table um, and made a nice uh, bar chart on Instagram and um, written it all up in a, a, a very posh looking report. Now we've got to write a discussion on this, or at least write something. What would you write? You've observed from, from this, and you're saying that there are more females in the population than males. Does everyone agree with that? So, so to summarise what's been said, someone said, well, this uh, says that there are more females in the population than males. Someone else then qualified that to say, well, actually, what we've seen is there are more... Um, females in our sample, that, uh, the males, and then someone else said, but we can't be sure that that represents our population. We don't know, all we know is something about the sample. We don't know anything about how representative uh, this is. So what might we do to get an idea of how representative this is of our um, population? Okay, so firstly, you're saying that my design of just questioning people close to my spaceship is not, um, it, well, may not be random. We, don't, we have, actually have no way of knowing whether that's random or not, or we, we haven't controlled for it. Um, but what could we do then, if we wanted to know whether this sample even begun to represent our population, what might we do? So how would we know if we had a large enough sample size? So you're saying you need to know the total population first? So is it feasible, if I go and find out all about the total population, then do I need to do this study? Because then I know the answer. But you are kind of right, I'm not. Um, so what we could do, I'm going to make a proposal, but uh, actually before I do that, this, so what we've just done, it may seem really obvious. It may not, but it may seem really obvious. These are the kinds of things that we write down in our discussion. Because actually, if you don't write it down, then a whole bunch of assumptions creep into your 
experimental data creep, creep into what you're um, talking about in your, uh, your results and in your discussion. And actually, it's not clear. What are the assumptions? What do you, how do you see your data? What is the context of your data? So I would say, I would, I'd begin by describing how this experiment was carried out. It was carried out next to my, my spacecraft. And um, 10 people were sampled, and they were the first to arrive. This may not be representative, however, you know, this is what we did. And it's not wrong. This, a, a common misconception is to say, oh, it's wrong. But it's not wrong. What you can say is the experiment could be done better. An experiment can always be done better. But what is wrong is to ignore the, the assumptions and not discuss them in your, it, and not explicitly state them in your, uh, in your work. So even on a really simple data set, you can actually generate quite a lot of discussion, quite a lot of things to write about. And that is the thing that we need to get into the practice and habit of doing and train our minds to think about these things, even when it seems so blindingly obvious that we feel stupid saying it or writing it. Because if we don't state those things, it's actually really stupid not to put them in, rather than stupid to put them in. Um, that's all that. Okay, so... Just a couple of points, again these are obvious, but the mode, I said this last week, the mode being the most recurring bin, standard deviation talks about the spread of our data. So this is actually from the height data, so I, I equally I categorise, as I said, the frequency table for height, and I put in, um, here we go, put in these, these intervals here and counted the number in there. And we can do that in SPSS. Again, I'll put a video up that shows you how to do that. And then you, and, and you can practice with the data yourself. And then you can turn that into a histogram. And again, you'll see the categories along the bottom there, counting. And that's, it looks quite a sparse uh, histogram. Then you've got a few things in each, uh, counts in each bin, one in these. But that just helps us see what our data looks like. And do not, so we all learn uh, things like mean, medium, mode, range, variance, standard deviation. Probably learnt these at high school, perhaps before. Do not underestimate their significance as descriptors of our data. The reason they're so commonplace and well known is because they are so useful. Um, and so, well, we just call measures of central tendency mean, median and mode. Okay. Mean is just our traditional average, median is the middle, va the middle value, so if we ordered everything to the one in the middle, and the mode is the most recurring value. And the only way you ever really get to estimate the mode is by looking at a histogram. And even there you have to be careful because when you've got low sample numbers like we've got here, it, that mode may be misleading. But it's useful to look uh, and to see these things there, I think you get a feel for the data. So I will always encourage you to visualise the data um, to get a feel for what's going on. Okay. Now I had another exercise. Um, so I was going to say, uh, analyse all this data, produce, uh, what I was going to say is produce histograms and frequency tables for all of the variables, and then actually write a discussion of the whole data set. Now, we won't do that, I'll leave that as a, um, a post-tutorial uh, activity and maybe post some uh, online some, some comments of my own about this. And we've already discussed many of these, uh, of these things. 